Ross. Make it happen. Stephen. Oh. Fabulous. You're right there where I can keep an eye on you. Call the meeting to order. We have public hearing on the tentative county supervisory district plan. Anything on that? Anything on I have that? nobody signed up. Nobody signed up. So we move on. Very well then, calling the uh, county board session to order. We will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We pray. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Bless the leaders of our land that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to the other nations of the earth. Grant that we may choose trustworthy leaders, contribute to wise decisions here tonight for the general welfare, and serve you faithfully in our generation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have roll call. Supervisor Dell is uh, fashionably late as scheduled. All right, we have roll call. Okay, I would look for a, approve, a motion to approve the agenda. Supervisor Romden, second by Swaggle. Any, any discussion, uh, uh, comments? The only thing that should be noted on the agenda is I'm going to move up on number eight. We have a resolution uh, in honor of Charles R. Wagner on his retirement. I'm going to move that up to uh, where we have the recognition. So all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. And I will make that uh, change on the agenda because I know Supervisor Wagner misses sitting through hour and a half, two hour long meetings. But, you know, if he wishes to stick around for the whole thing, he'll have the option, but it won't be required of him that way. Uh, approval of the uh, minutes for the previous meeting. Supervisor Augustine, second by Lazansky. Any questions, comments, corrections on the minutes? All right. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Citizens input. I have none. Does anyone wish to speak to the board? Anyone wish to speak? Is there anyone who wishes to speak to the board? All right, we will move on uh, to the resolution in recognition. Uh, you go ahead and read that for me then. Sorry, I don't want to do your job for you. <laughs> I didn't have you over there last night, so you know I had to do all this. So. Sure. Resolution in honor of Charles R. Wagner on his retirement from the Kewanee County Board of Supervisors. To the honorable Kewanee County Board of Supervisors, whereas our friend and colleague Charles R. Wagner was appointed to the Kewanee County Board of Supervisors on August 17, 1999, where he served with honor and distinction for 22 years until his retirement on July 20th, 2021. And whereas in Supervisor Wagner's 22 years of service, he served on nearly every standing committee of the board where he was frequently designated chair of the committees he served. And whereas Supervisor Wagner's legacy is his passion and leadership in the areas of water quality and his distinguished service on the Land and Water Conservation Committee that led to meaningful advancements locally and, and indeed across the state of Wisconsin in improving our water. And whereas Supervisor Wagner worked in the spirit of cooperation and collegiality, strived to build consensus um, around common sense solutions, and is a well-respected among his fellow supervisors and members of our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Kewanee County Board of Supervisors, duly assembled this 21st day of September, 2021, that the board hereby convey, conveys its deepest gratitude to Supervisor Charles R. Wagner for his distingu distinguished and dedicated service to the citizens of, of Kewanee County and honors him on his retirement from the Kewanee County Board of Supervisors. We have a motion. Supervisor Teske, second by Kroll. Any discussion? 
All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? And Supervisor Teske, did you want to take uh, when did you want to take a recess, short recess now for cake? If that's what if, you want. If that works. And uh, oh, and I have uh, a gavel to present to Supervisor Wagner. And uh, then we will take uh, we'll take a 10 minute recess for cake. So we're recessed 10 minutes. Oh. <laughs> Last year. I gave you the knife. <laughs> Best for all of you. Turn your mic on. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Tesky will never hear you. <laughs> here, here you go, Chuck. Warming up. She's taking could, your place, could, uh, Chuck, with could, the uh, with the hearing. <laughs> I could use this one, I guess. Um, I just want to say thank everybody, especially my wife. Uh, for the last 22 years, um, there were an awful lot of meetings. <laughs> running across the state and a lot of things. And she put up with an awful lot. And so I really wanna thank her for that. Um, I really enjoyed myself on the board. Um, there were an awful lot of things that happened in the past 22 years as you know, anybody that's been around here knows. Um, and there's an awful lot that's gonna to have to get done yet uh, further down the road. Um, but, uh, and I think we've got a, a very good group here that can, uh, meet those challenges head on and, and do a good job with finding solutions and things that'll at least meet the requirement that most of the people wanna see uh, and not cost an arm and a leg, although things are expensive. But uh, so I wish you all the best of luck and uh, thank you very much. We'll take a 10 minute recess to get cake.
Because I think our anniversary the issue would have not passed anything. Awesome. But so I, think, I, I, I need to talk to Steve Anderson with his young school district, or? Yeah. Yes. They make the farm work. I don't like how that's getting handled. I don't like how that's getting handled. Oh, I'm glad it was on the same page. But before they make a stop, they were dropped off at the farm then? Yeah, we were only on the board. Yeah, we were only on the board. First prize and partial. Oh, you're going to do this first? How's yours? 32 Chevrolet. Look at it. Original? Yeah. Thank you, Joel. 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 Thank you, I like to do that, Joe. If I'm taking that for a pork and pancake or something, we'll get $15,400. You're married, that's why, right? That's right. Well, your sucks that, right? It was well Well, we had our old public works truck. That was an old fire truck that we handed down the public works. You had to drag your feet coming down all the hill to stop that thing. It would be nice to find out where that's different. Wow, he's going to get to take a half a cake home, huh? And uh, they expect you to bring the beer for that. Thank you. Have a good night. Got a lot of cake leftovers there. You're very welcome. It doesn't take much to you know, convince me to stop for cake. All right, we have, uh, go, let's move on to appointments. Kiwani County UW Extension Committee appointment, Stephen Agamite. I have a motion, Supervisor Romden, second by Supervisor Swaggle. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You are on the UW Extension Committee. Congratulations. Next appointment. Local Emergency Planning Committee, Tom Ackerman. Motion from Supervisor Poppy, second by Supervisor Augustine. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Then we had discussion on uh, county board supervisors voting while attending virtually. It was originally down as discussion, though my understanding was that we wanted to be prepared if it was desired to take action. We could do that here tonight. So I did have that change. There, was a, there were a lot of questions about this last time. I think it may be more just a matter of clarification. And, and uh, I'm glad we have uh, Mr. Wisnicki here tonight because the clarification I believe is that if a super, the way it stands is if a supervisor is not present here physically, they are not able to vote or? Yes, right now we don't have a rule on virtual attendance. So if you want to authorize that uh, you can, but if right now, if they're not here, uh, body present, they do not count for quorum and they cannot vote. Okay. so. 
uh, let me let me understand this correctly, make sure that uh, I don't get this wrong. Um, if we do nothing here tonight, it will it will mean that unless a supervisor is physically present, they cannot vote. And there is no action that the chair could take uh, to allow that even, correct? The only thing you could do is by a two thirds a vote of this board, suspend the rules and authorize that on a given night, but a chair himself or herself could not authorize that. Okay. Supervisor Volenweider. So I am not looking personally at, at changing uh, the rule. However, I guess, do we have some clarification regarding if the whole board was to have to be virtual? Uh, I would assume at that point, then obviously we could all vote virtually, but not not an individual or a couple individuals. We have no allowance for that currently, do we, uh, Mr. Wisnicki? There is no allowance for that. So I guess that's something we should probably consider if we were forced to be in a virtual uh, meeting environment, we would obviously have to continue the duties and obligations to the county for business. What would be the circumstances if there were circumstances in which the board could not meet? There are emergency orders, correct? That would uh, kick in. <laughs> I can't envision a situation where we could not meet but had to. Um, well, it would be if, in the event of, you know, we had this. Uh, pandemic going on and some some counties did not meet. I know the city of Kiwani did not meet in person. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we were able to meet in person, but the, it's the unforeseen, I guess, is all I'm posing because there's been a lot of unforeseen in the last couple of years. Well, we would be trying to develop a policy for the unforeseen. Is that necessary? Is it well, possible? If, <laughs> if we encountered such an emergency where we could not meet in person, I think under those scenario, we would provide the best notice we could and we would appear via, you know, some remote means and we would have to have that meeting and decide that it's okay. Two thirds of us agree that we would change the rule to conduct that meeting. But again, this would be in a situation where we have to meet and we right. couldn't meet. Mr. Felt, you have uh, some clarification on that, it looks like. I, I think what we, what the board may want to consider is, is two different things. First, the issue itself of do you allow uh, county board supervisors to participate, meaning vote remotely, whether that is one person, whether that is five people, whether that is 20 people, as a matter of normal procedure? Would you allow someone that uh, is not here physically to be able to vote remotely. That's the first issue. If we're talking more from a pandemic standpoint where it's an emergency standpoint, uh, an emergency rule or a two thirds of the board could therefore allow something to happen in a special case. I think the big issue that you really want to be discussing, and if you decide to take action tonight, you may, is whether to allow as a regular matter of course to allow a supervisor to participate, and when I say participate, to allow them to vote remotely. After that, the rest of it just kind of cascades down. Right. And my impression, unless there's been a change of heart since the last time, my impression is that there was not a lot of appetite uh, to change the rules to allow remote voting. Unless I've read that long wrong or if there is a change, I think that the, the my impression was that uh, if you're if you're here, you vote. If you're not, uh, things happen. You know, people get sick. People uh, uh, go to Disney World. A supervisor mass to wear and uh, other things and uh you know they they miss out on those meetings or dollywood dollywood uh the uh the senior version of disney yeah 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 you were at the lawrence welk theater the one time we heard the waltz scene in the background so it, it, unless there's a unless there's a motion on something I, I guess that would be the first thing unless there is a motion to allow remote voting under normal circumstances, simply for no other reason than that a person is on vacation or whatever, the rule will stand. And if you are not here, you will not vote. Straightforward. Um, then, the, yes, Supervisor Dale, please. 
but you still be able to do it remote if you wanted to. It's just that you're you wouldn't be able to vote. That's correct. Oh, we're happy to have our live audience here tonight. I have. I have, yeah, we're live now. I mean, there's a lot of people uh, spectating now. I mean, I, I have a fan base. There's probably two, three people, uh, you know, online here tonight. <laughs> so, so you would not be able to vote. That that is that is not allowed under current rules. And then we come to, you know, emergency rules, and I don't, I don't, I don't think we would be prepared to do anything with that here tonight. Um, I guess I would be looking. For, uh, for direction if we have a desire to put something, to try to come up with something that would foresee an emergency where the board could not meet. And I, that would see, I, I think that would be difficult, but, uh, and if there were such a circumstance, what would that look like? What would we be? You have a, a comment there, Mr. Feld? I just think that if it's an emergency type of thing of which we were not sure what it would look like, hence, why it would be unforeseen. But I do believe that we have mechanisms in place that if we needed to meet as a board remotely, that there is a pathway to allow for that, that a meeting could take place remotely and voting could take place. I think the, the most important part was just that very first item is, right. do you in general allow uh, supervisors in committees or at the county board to vote if they are attending remotely. And what I'm he hearing from the silence is that there is not an appetite to allow supervisors to vote remotely. So yeah. I reached out to my counterparts and counties are doing this one of two ways. They're either not allowing it or they are allowing it with the leave of the chair. So those are sort of the two paths um, our colleagues are taking. Yeah. And so unless there's a motion, it it will be so they're doing it either not allowing it or allowing it at the leave of the chair with the way it stands right now we do not allow it and i'm not seeing any motion so that's the way it will remain which i am just fine with because then you know if you do it to the, at the leave of the chair i mean in theory you could have a circumstance where okay somebody's quarantined well that probably be a a legitimate thing um, but then, you know, if I allow one, and then uh, when Supervisor Mastler calls me and there's Mickey Mouse in the background and it's a small world playing behind him, you know, am I, do I allow that? And so there gets to be a lot of subjectivity and leeway. I think it's, I think the way it is now is just fine. Um, and, you know, we, um, we don't try to, uh, in this county, we, we don't try to schedule votes for when we think some people are going to be gone and that kind of thing. So we have a pretty good working uh, board. Okay, and the emergency rule, is there any, I don't think there's any uh, need to do anything further on that tonight either. All right, fabulous, thank you. Uh, moving on, annual reports, NWTC, Dr. Uh, Raffin, Raffin? Raffin, no show, unless he's, Hiding in the peanut gallery somewhere. I he would I have needed think. to have been. I'm going to guess that no one had uh, contacted him to invite, but I'm not sure. He was invited. He was invited. Um, okay. Well, either way, he's not here, and I'm not going to try to do his report for him. So, super, uh, Mr. Felt, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, I want to. Uh, uh, read a letter from the U.S. Department of State, and it basically is a commendation to the county clerk's office. It says that we would like to take this opportunity to thank the Kiwani County Clerk's Office for its continued passport application acceptance services and to co congratulate you and your acceptance agents for, an outst for outstanding achievements in your operation of the passport application acceptance program. Uh, I won't read the whole letter. Basically, what it says is that with over three, with over 730 facilities in the Chicago Passport Agency's region having undergone uh, uh, an assessment, Kiwani County is one of the few that reached this outstanding level. So that is a testament to the work of Jamie and Debbie and 
how they're able to process and, and get those passports taken care of. And I just wanted the board to be aware of their hard work and outstanding work. Congratulations. Second, and you have in front of you the administrator's proposed 2022 county budget. I won't go through it tonight. That's what we usually do in October. I will just touch on a couple different things. One is that the staffing in the 2022 budget is at the same level as what it was when I first started in 2015. In that same respect, the tax rate is the lowest it's been in over a decade. It's since 20, it's lower than what it was in 2011, the tax rate is. We have continued to reduce our outstanding debt. It's half of what it was when I first started. And as we go from department to department in October, uh, I will try to answer and, and provide summaries. But most importantly, I encourage any and all of you I will meet you for coffee. I will meet you for lunch. I will meet you for dinner. I will even meet you for a beer. If there is questions that you have regarding the budget, I am more than willing to come and meet with you and answer whatever questions you may have. How, we, how I do the process of the budget is instruction letters are sent out in July, late June, July. We get them back uh, in late August, and I then make or propose my, sep my September budget that you have tonight. I do not at any time ask for the input of supervisors or the board, and the reason why is because I want to provide what I consider to be an apolitical document. And now once, now that I have proposed this, the board and committees, finance committee, and executive committee can make any changes that they see fit. And I encourage any changes that you want to do. Other than that, I could go on for another half hour, but then we're getting into the budget. I will just wait. And like I said, if there are questions, please feel free to ask me. We know that the levy will be roughly $12.8 million. Total expenditures is $24.4 million. And fund balance applied is about $362,000. But we have a tax, again, a tax rate decrease of 6.9%, at which is 6.88, which is the first time it's been below seven in over a decade. So with that, I will uh, give it back to you, Mr. Chair. Can you just give a real quick, uh, for the newer members, can you give a real quick uh, explanation on fund balance? Sure. Fund balance can be a number of different things. Uh, fund balance is not levy. It's money that goes into specific funds. And I'll give a perfect example. The Dominion payment of $500,000 that we receive each year for probably the next five years goes into the Economic Development Fund. We have other revenues that go into specific funds. And there are times that money is taken out of those funds to help pay for uh, expenditures within the county, depending on what they may be. Okay. And on fund balance, how how many different funds are uh, how many different sources of revenue are there in that roughly? Well, the the easiest way for yeah. for me to do that is if you start to look at pages within your budget, ten through fifteen, ten through thirteen, we'll talk about all the 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 majority of funds that are there, and what's coming in and what's going out. And then pages 14 and 15, I'm sorry, pages, page 15, 16, and 17 talk about transfers from those different funds. Okay. Very good. I know that's always been a question that's been asked because it's uh, such a 
you know, large uh, kind of, I don't want to say ungainly category, but it's. Uh, well, and, the, and there may be a myth, Mr. Chair, in the respect that I want to be very clear, just because we're using funds from fund balance does not mean that we're spending more money than we're taking in. Right. It does not mean that. So we may think that if you're looking at it first and you see $362,000, that somehow we're spending $362,000 more in expenditures than, we, than what we have received in revenue. And that is not the case. Right. I know it's a, a question that gets asked along the way every year. So I figure we'd put that out there right away. Correct. And in October, what we can do is myself and finance director Kunish can go through all of those different types of things. And again, if you have specific questions, please feel free to ask and we can set up time to, to go over the budget with you in as much detail as you see fit. Excellent, thank you. Moving on to reports, highways, solid waste. Any questions, comments? Executive committee, we met last night, so you don't have the minutes, but I can tell you if you have the agenda, uh, we had a, Lengthy agenda with lots of uh, requests for uh, increase, additional step increases, modification of wage scales, uh, transfer of contract case worker positions to county workers, additional step increase, reclassifications, and I, the executive committee approved every single one of them. So they were in a giving mood. It was uh, like Christmas in September. Um, any other questions, any questions on executive? And we did uh, the um, position, we did create the new uh, land information coordinator position, which is an hourly position and is for the time being going to, not going to be placed in the treasurer's department, but be a one person department. Okay. Public Health and Veterans Committee. No questions. Uh, UW Extension Committee. Land and Water. Public Safety and Justice Committee. The minutes must be crystal clear this month. Finance and Public Property Committee. Human Services. Parks Promotion and Maintenance Committee. Business Development Loan Fund Committee. Shouldn't be anything there. KCEDC. No minutes anymore, nothing. So should we keep that? To... Okay, so we'll scratch that all together from now on. Uh, Broadband Study Committee. Um, Bug Tussle, I know is, uh, they have their uh, sure. ribbon cutting this uh, Friday at one o'clock. Correct. Uh, I can tell you as a uh, uh, new Bug Tussle customer, uh, so far it's really pretty good and quite an improvement. And uh, if I may, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. so for those, for anyone with the county board that may want to attend Friday afternoon at 1 p.m., there will be a, a ribbon cutting event at the Ryan's Corner Tower. I forget the exact uh, address, but it's on AB. Uh, going south out of right Luxembourg before, before we get to AB and Valley. If yes. You, you know, right before that, if you get to Valley and AB, you, if you can't find it at yeah. that point, you're probably correct. So there will be a, a ribbon cutting at one o'clock, uh, again, celebrating the uh, the towers coming online and, and service being provided. Steve Schneider bringing a cake to that? Uh, that I'm unsure of. Okay. But uh, so this has been, uh, I've heard, uh, I'm, I'm hearing different comments from people that are uh, getting hooked up and um, I'm hearing positive comments. Uh, people seem pretty happy. I can tell you the service uh, works so far is working, is a dramatic improvement, working very well. So I'm hearing the same things as well, Mr. Chair. Very, very pleased about that. Yes, sir, Mr. Lu uh, Supervisor Lukes. That we got hooked up also and a little deceiving though he said it was going to be fifty dollars a month and came up to eighty nine dollars a month. 
probably depends on what speeding, what speed you're wanting, but yeah. Was that the, uh, was that the supervisor's discount? Uh, <laughs> no. no, that's the Casco premium, <laughs> but the service is good. Well, the package though, I mean, it should be, if it were the, there was the county agreed on the 25 meg was the $50. Package. Right. But then there's rental of the, the box that or whatever like five bucks or something. Yeah. You Did could you... buy it or rent it or. There's all kinds of fees involved. Yeah, are you getting the 60 meg service or something where you're at? No, no, no I'm okay. not. <laughs> okay. Well, I know. I mean, I could tell you out to uh, out where I'm at. We um, we we uh, got the 60 meg service, and I can't remember what it was. And so obviously there was there was additional payment on that, but that's because you know the 60 meg service is quite a bit more than the, the agreed upon with the county. Right. It, it does work. Uh, does work quite well. So. All right, very good. Uh, Public Safety Facility Study Committee, uh, you have those minutes so we continue to move forward and uh, I think we'll have uh, hopefully some further information within the next couple of months, um, you know, be able to present something larger. But we are uh, making quite a bit of progress working with the architect and um, anything you wish to add to that, Supervisor Poppy? Or okay. All right, you already had your recess. So um, I was gonna say, if you wanted another piece of cake, uh, Chuck took that with him. Uh, first reading first, first reading of ordinance. We... A resolution granting the petition for bridge aid, Town of Red River, fiscal impact, $40,038 from County Aid Bridge Fund. I have a motion, Supervisor Poppy, second by Mastelier. Any discussion? Okay, so. Um, I'll wait. Are we prepared to register? We're ready. You may register your vote. And how many are we looking for here tonight? 19. 19? 18. And I'm at 12. Nothing 13. turned on. 13. 18. But I'm only at 13. Now 14. Four more to go. Oh, here we're oh, coming. Three more. Excuse me. 16, two more. Didn't turn on right away. One more. <laughs> 18. 18 in favor. None opposed. Motion carries. As soon as you're ready for Did the next resolution. Really often? <laughs> A resolution approving the tentative county supervisory district plan. Do I have a motion, Supervisor Romden? Do I have a second, Supervisor Augustine? Uh, questions, we have uh, Mr. Hansen here this evening. If uh, you know there are questions, I understand he's got a lot of answers. Our, uh, Supervisor Swaggle first. There's a new map in the room here this evening. Here's a paper copy of this, Scott. Yes, okay. Uh, I was supposed to look at it, you had said when I called, but I didn't get around to it, so thank you, sir. You need to get hooked up to that bug tussle wireless. You'd have been able to see that. Uh, Supervisor Lukes. Did the districts change at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, because our town was split into three districts and it makes it tough, tough for voting. Well, it'll be wards. Right, right. But I don't know if, it's, if that changed at all, but town of Casco has three different, it's cut up three different ways. I'm happy to report, Supervisor Lukes, that the village of Casco is all in one district. As for the town of Casco, that would still be three districts. The village is included in the supervisory district for this town. Correct. Okay. Other co Casco, if I remember right, this part of Casco and Peter Stone are together now? Correct. Yeah. But it makes tough at election time, you have to have all these different ballots. Um, yes. <laughs> the, the most difficult part about it, Supervisor Luke's, is of course the population part of it. We try to make, you have to try to make your supervisory districts as close to having the same population as possible. So then where that makes that difficult is you, you when you rob from Peter, then you have to rob from Paul, then you have to rob from Simon, then you have to rob from to eventually get everyone to have roughly about the same uh, population in each district. And that's what makes it really difficult. Yeah, I get it, yeah. So. 
Yes, we do. Yeah, they have the worst ballots by. I by think far we have seven county, ballots so, yeah. in a local election, <laughs> so it makes it tough on you guys. Are our, our clerk's mother. <laughs> Congratulations, Chairman Jones. <laughs> Population there. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Supervisor Romden. Just a, just a comment on this issue, you know, with the population changing and the complications of all that. I think Steve did an excellent job in trying to maintain a really good map for the county. Yeah, I think he did remarkable work when you consider all of the variables that he had to deal with. So I, certainly we, are, we deeply appreciate that. And I'm sure that 10 years from now, we're going to deeply miss uh, but, you know, he may come out of retirement special for that project, shaking his head no. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, this, this is the tentative plan, so it's got to go to the locals now to work through mm -hmm. a little bit, and then yeah. you'll it'll come back for the final approval in November. So right. if you have a chance to look at it and you think there needs to be some modest changes, there's still an opportunity to, to do that. Yes, thank you. And But we still, um, we still need to vote on it. Uh, to move that process forward, correct? Yes. All right. Any other questions on the supervisory districts? Everybody is thrilled with their new district, yes? Okay, some are more thrilled than others. Um, and we'll get a little ready. All right, you may register your vote. Looking to get to 18. <laughs> Looking for 18. I was number Can seven we get to 18? No, oh, 18 in favor, none opposed. Motion carries. All right. We have no ordinances read at previous county board meeting. Communications, resolutions from other counties? None. Kiwani County events? Oh, go ahead, Scott. You got it. Supervisor Yonke. Saturday, Zubilee. They're going to dedicate the three statues that Steve donated to the county. There's Steve Bremer, be, for yeah, those Steve, that didn't know. Steve Bremer. Uh, hours are from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. There's going to be a car show and ice cream. All right. <laughs> You're showing that Buick Skylark? Sure. <laughs> Any other events? It's got a 1994 Buick Skylark he's been cruising around in. That's car show material. Uh, <laughs> Any other Kiwani County events? Okay, none. All right, comments? I have no comments this month. Um, the next meeting dates we have uh, previously scheduled October 19th at 6 p.m. Then we have November 9th previously scheduled at 6 p.m. Then we have uh, December 21st that says 6 p.m. But if that's acceptable, that should actually, we normally meet on that uh, in December, we normally meet at five o'clock. So we would look, be looking, I would be looking for a motion to move that to five o'clock. The reason for that, new members, uh, we usually have a uh, Christmas uh, party. Dinner, oh, whatever, you, dinner and a party. Supervisor Poppy moves, second Dell. Uh, that works for everyone. Any questions, discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And Christmas party, uh, anybody wish to organize that again this year? Or, uh, Supervisor Teske? Okay, you generally. Uh, you see what you come up with. All right. We'll expect a full report back next month on that uh, or sometime in the future. Thank you. I'll have a motion to adjourn. Supervisor Volenweider, second by Dell. No discussion. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? 